Hello and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I thought I'd give you a detailed explanation of how the winder for the back of my hand works. Let's get started. So rather than trying to explain how it works on the actual piece, which truly only measures about an inch and a half from bolt hole to bolt hole, I decided to use my Falcon 2 laser to cut out a supersized model so maybe I could better explain the actual functionality of it. So this is how it would look in its assembled format. Wiffle tree, wiffle tree, that goes from here to there. So you can kind of see the chain goes around a pulley, up to the top of the core, through the core, and around another pulley, and onto the second wiffle tree. Those two are tied together. So motion on one generates motion on the other. But where it's a through design, say if you have force on the index and middle, then as you can see, it pulls the rope through from the pinky and ring. What that does is it allows you to have a super compliant grip. So the fingers will adjust to just about any configuration. So the way that it works is the chain that goes through the wrist assembly to the gimbal and gaffney ends up pulling on this part of the linkage. So this is how it would look just pulling through normal operation. So you flex the wrist and it ends up pulling both of these chains evenly. Say the index and middle are up against something solid. So we'll hold this cable in a fixed position and go ahead and move the drive arm. As you can see, all of the motion of the rope goes through where the ring and pinky would be connected. Now that functions all well and good, but what about the lock under load? Now there's a piece of triangle tooling that goes in these two areas right here. These two triangles, there's a triangle here and a triangle on the underside of this top plate. What they do is once the fingers are closed, then if you continue to pull just a little bit more, what happens is there's a hinge right here and once enough force is applied to overcome the spring that goes right here, then these two plates close. And what that does is it creates an interference in those two pieces of triangle tooling. And that keeps the fingers from back driving. So as long as there's about 10 pounds of load on the fingers, then those two plates will be engaged and it won't allow them to back drive. So let's get a closer look of how that linkage works. So as you can see, it's just as simple as having just three slots and a couple bolts to retain everything. You have a little scotch yoke right here. With only about 20 thousandths of lateral motion at this end of the mechanism, it'll end up bringing both pieces of those tooling together enough to give you about 40 thousandths worth of interface. And with that, keeping the fingers from back driving. I hope that this model and explanation helps everybody kind of understand the mechanism that I'm using for the back of my hand to drive the fingers. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. You're so spicy for touch a tiny kitty. Richard. Less than pleased, buddy. I'm petting the girl. You don't like that? Okay, treats, come on, come on.